So Jordan, do you think everybody at home understands that Alberta, although gorgeous in the summer and winter, is an absolute hideous monochromatic wasteland in the spring and fall? I don't even want to shoot today. I'm just going to look for color and if I see it, I'm going to shoot. I don't care if it's good. And uh, I don't know, should you juice up this video? Like add saturation? Oh, it probably looks disgusting. Let's just do monochromatic. Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here and as we've already mentioned, welcome to Alberta's beautiful autumn loveliness. We'll do our best. Uh, but today we're looking at the brand new Olympus EM5 Mark III. Now, although the 1 Series are their sort of professional full-on bodies, it's the 5 Series which have always been the most popular cameras and that's thanks to compact body design with beautiful styling and yet still being a very capable platform, weather sealing, good focus and all the rest. So I'm excited to play with this third version. We've got 1.04 firmware, we're going to put this camera through its paces, but rather than do a review, I think today I really want to talk more about where this camera fits in the market and where it's going to fit in your camera bag. Well, I'm pretty confident I can handle a coyote, but uh, it was nice knowing you, Jordan. Jordan, look, there's a tree. It's still alive. I'm going to go shoot it. It's like, it's like finding a caribou when you're trying to navigate the Northwest Passage and everybody's eating each other. Like I swear, the first manufacturer to make a stabilizer that works on wind, they're going to do great. It'll be Sony. Pull. I hope you're not filming this, it's going to look totally contrived. A lot of leaves. So it has to be said that when you look at the M5 Mark III, we're not getting anything revolutionary as far as technology goes. We're essentially getting all the same components from the EM1 II. So you're getting that 20 megapixel sensor, which is fine. You're getting a phase detect autofocus array, which is probably the biggest improvement here. And that does give us really nice eye detect capabilities, quick focusing, no wobble. I am really enjoying that now on this series of camera. We're also getting the same processing engine, but I guess my point is this. The EM1 II is by no means a new camera, all right? And we need to see some innovation here in the Micro Four Thirds lineup, not just Olympus, but Panasonic as well. And unfortunately, this camera is just not pushing any boundaries. First thoughts here on the grip and the whole handling. I love the control dials. I mean, that is Olympus's thing. They do it so well. And the grip itself for my hand is pretty comfortable, although my fingers are jammed up against this lens. It's a 12 to 100 zoom, so that's not going to be the case with some of the smaller primes. But if you had larger hands holding this camera, you might find it very uncomfortable. Now, this camera also does really scream out for a joystick. I like having autofocusing joysticks on cameras. However, we do now have an AF targeting pad. So again, eye up to my EVF. I can use my thumb and move it around and that does work almost as well. Oh, I found a coyote print here for you, Jordan. You didn't rub yourself in bacon this morning, did you? All right. I mean, they're like cute little dogs anyways. Just give them a pet. They're fine. Now the EM5 cameras have always been Olympus's most beautiful cameras, taking heavy styling from the classic film OM series, and they are brilliant to look at. And the EM5 III is brilliant to look at from a distance. However, I do have one issue here. When you get this camera into your hand, things change a little bit. At its core, it still feels solid, but you cannot help but feel like a lot of it now is very plasticky. Uh, you know, the prism, for example, used to be metal and it came to a nice fine point, but now you can see plastic seams on it. The on-off switch also feels very plasticky. The locking button for the mode dial also feels plasticky, although I do still like the control knobs here. All in all, it seems to take a lot of cues from the OM10 series, and on top of that, we don't have a lot of custom buttons here. And up here on the command dial where it's absolutely screaming to be a button where I've tried to press it repeatedly, it's in fact just a knurled metal cap. We're missing out on a lot of these features and I can't help but feel like the M53 dumbs down a lot of stuff. Everything they could get rid of except the weather ceiling. And what does this get us? It drops on the EM5 Mark II's weight of 469 grams down to this camera's 414 grams, which by the way is one seventh of a Nikkor knocked lens. I'd honestly trade 50 grams to get a metal body again. Now the bottom of the camera is equally cheap feeling. It's got a plastic plate to it. I feel like this 
leatherette cover for the electronic contacts is going to disappear at any moment. Under here on the door though, to keep the camera nice, small and lightweight, we now have the BLS 50 battery. It is definitely smaller than what the M5s used to use. However, we get the same battery life, so that's nice. And I do like that we don't have to cram an SD card right next to the battery. We have a dedicated door here. It is a UHS-2 slot, which is great, and it seems well sealed, but there's only one. Jordan, look, I see color over there, really bright, vivid color. That's an Ikea. Now, as for displays, the back LCD, nothing new from what we've seen before. It does fully articulate. The touchscreen interface works okay. The EVF is a 2.36 million dot, and unfortunately, it doesn't have the same refresh capabilities that the EM12 has. However, it is an OLED, and when you look through this thing, you get lots of contrast, nice and vivid. It's actually really enjoyable to compose with. So, Jordan, I just realized something depressing. My outfit matches the colors of this landscape perfectly. So I am as boring as Alberta in the autumn. It's true, isn't it? So the first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is go back and watch our Olympus EM1X video because it's a really good video. And that camera actually did some very exciting stuff that we need to see in Micro Four Thirds. You know, they're combining deep learning techniques for autofocus, they're amazing sort of handheld live and D modes for long exposure or handheld uh, multi-shot capabilities. I mean, it was really very impressive stuff. Unfortunately, none of that has made its way to this new camera and that's really quite sad. We have a lot of the still very effective Olympus-based technology like uh, the live composite mode, which is beautiful for nighttime photography and, you know, tripod multi-shot. But this is stuff that a lot of other companies are also utilizing. Now, keep in mind the EM1X is a large body. It does have dual processors. So why we don't have these features in this camera? Maybe it's a price thing. Maybe it's a processing thing. Maybe it's both. Maybe Olympus just didn't really want to cannibalize sales from their EM1X line by putting some of the more useful features in a more affordable camera. But in the end, it means that this camera doesn't really make a unique splash on the market. Yes. Oh, magic. Your best one yet. Why are you so sad? This is demeaning. But the face detect works even, uh, even when your face is sad and sideways. That should make you happy. That's pretty impressive. No more smiling. <laughs> yes. All right, so we got a little bit of wind and movement here. So we're gonna to try to find a better place to do an IBIS test as well as test the tripod multi-shot. Uh, by the way, also Jordan is terrified of the coyotes, so we better get going. Okay, so we're out here freezing uh, with a little bit of distance so we can see and get some detailed shots. We're using the tripod multi-shot mode on the M53 here. Now the M52 was a 16 megapixel sensor and it gave us basically, if I remember correctly, a 40 megapixel JPEG and then just over 60 megapixel RAW file. This is gonna do a very similar thing, 50 megapixel JPEG though and 80 megapixel RAW file. You do see an improvement in resolution if you've got a good stable platform. Uh, you know, Olympus has come a long way now in that any water or movement, although you still get a little bit of weirdness, it's not as crazy as the original setup was. Keep in mind though that tripod based multi shot is no longer just Olympus's technology. A lot of other manufacturers are using this. And what I'm really missing is the handheld capabilities that the EM1X had because that really opened up a lot of possibilities for leaving your tripod at home and still getting substantial benefits. Now here's a nice improvement actually for the EM53. Now first off, strong effective IBIS has always been something in Olympus's wheelhouse. They have very stable cameras and this camera is no exception. It improves things quite a bit over the EM5 Mark II. Now you're getting about 6.5 stops of IBIS when you use the right lenses that support it. You know, just over five stops without, but it is very effective, very aggressive. Uh, you know, this is something Olympus has always done well and I do like it. I'm also gonna say that although the body is light, I do feel that the shutter mechanism itself is very well dampened and so combine that all together you do get a stable platform for shooting at slow shutter speeds. Hey everyone it's Jordan to talk about the video capabilities of the EM53 which is filming me right now in the Cinema 4K profile at 237 megabits per second. Now if you want to know about the video features on this I would really check out our EM1X4 video episode. We go into a lot of detail and most of the video features from the EM53 can be found in the more expensive EM1X as well as the EM12 with its most recent firmware update. However there are a couple major exceptions. First and foremost the EM53 does not have a headphone jack. 
Now with the EM5 II, you were able to add a battery grip and get access to a headphone jack with that. Unfortunately, that's not going to be an option with the EM5 III. Other real limitation is we don't have Olympus's OM log recording. You can shoot with the flat profile, which is what I'm on right now. Very straightforward to grade, but it is a little more contrasty than I'd like. I'd still love to see a log file for a little more dynamic range. However, my other favorite things about the EM1X and EM12 for video are present in this camera. The big standout for me is the image stabilization. It is incredibly solid, really gets rid of those micro jitters you might see when recording video. Now, bear in mind if you're walking with the camera or vlogging, then I do recommend using their IS Mode 1, which is a digital and optical system. There is a small crop when you're using that. However, if you use it in the optical only Mode 2, as you can see here, you'll sometimes wind up with a little bit of weird warping around the edge of the frame. Other thing I really love is that we have phase detect autofocus in this, and it does a really nice job of kind of smoothly transitioning. It doesn't have a lot of that jumpiness or kind of wobble that you'll see with some of the Panasonic Micro Four Thirds camera, like the G95 that's the closest competitor here. It might seem like a difficult choice between this and the Panasonic G95, its natural competitor, since this camera has uncropped 4K, better image stabilization on it, and phase detect autofocus. However, the G95 gets you the log recording and a headphone jack. However, it's worth pointing out that for only a couple hundred dollars more, you can get Olympus's EM1 II, and that's going to get you phase detect, it's going to get you a headphone jack, log recording, and a bigger battery than the EM5 III. So if you're looking for an Olympus as kind of a hybrid photo video device, I think the EM1 II makes a lot more sense. Okay, so I think we've established this camera's not doing anything revolutionary in the market. It's just catching up to what a lot of other companies already have. But let's talk about price point and how it compares. So first off, the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. This camera has basically the same guts as the EM5 Mark III, but you do get log files for video. You do get dual card slots. You get better battery life, although it is with a larger, heavier body, although that's not always a downside. If you're shooting wildlife and sports, that might actually be a benefit for you. If you look at the Panasonic G9, this camera is basically the same price, and I feel like the Panasonic camera gives you lots of features. A higher res EVF with better magnification and the ability to change eye relief. The Panasonic G9 also gives you very similar features as far as multi-shot capabilities, 4K60 video, and again, we're talking the exact same price point. But again, it is a larger, heavier body. One thing though about the Panasonic, and one shining thing for this camera, Panasonics are still doing contrast detect only DFD which in single autofocus is brilliant, but in continuous can be a little bit distracting, although it is still effective. If you're really looking for having phase detect autofocus in a small compact body, well, that might be where the EM5 III shines. Keep in mind too that this is replacing the EM5 Mark II, which is over four years old. So I guess I just expected more to come out of this camera. I think the real appeal here is going to be if you want something that is really compact and light but has the capabilities of the EM1 Mark II, this gets you pretty close. And again, the autofocus performance has been very, very nice. I think overall this camera is going to have a tough time standing out, but if you want something that from a distance looks really sexy and is compact, this might be something that finds its way into your camera bag. Please subscribe to the channel, let us know what you think. Check out Instagram and Twitter as well. I am sorry for the lack of colors in Alberta in the autumn, but our own Dan Bracalia was in Utah shooting the same camera, and I'm sure he's got some beautiful photos that you can look at in the sample galleries to get some more variety. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon.